All right, good morning, class. Uh, today, or yesterday, we went over plot and plot development, and we did a lecture on that in class. And we talked uh, largely about the rising actions in plot development. So in the first two assignments, we'd kind of gone through the characters and the settings, which is usually how a book or novel is introduced. And in those assignments I asked you to do, we looked at a character or uh, perhaps various character uh, various character traits among several characters and in the second assignment we looked at the setting and we drew a setting that the author had created in our minds what we thought it would look like and if I gave let you all read for all reading the same book and we all even found the same setting to look at to choose from we all would have produced different drawings um, the author is able to produce a unique drawing for yourself in your own mind and what it looks like and by drawing it out we kind of get a bring that into reality of what that, that image looks like to you. Uh, some of you were able to do it extraordinarily well. You're just talented artists. You're much more talented than I am, as you'll see in my, my paper bag method. So it's been really nice to see some of that artwork come out and some of your identity come out through that artwork. It's been really awesome, actually. Uh, I've never had those skills of drawing, but I always enjoy drawing. So I've always been drawn to drawing and taking art classes and enjoying it, but I've never had the natural ability like I see in some of you. Uh, so it's fascinating to see, uh, especially because you're in grade six, and we'll see while this will continue. Now, this week's assignment, as some of you have noticed in your comments or emails to me, is not a drawing assignment, so it doesn't appeal to you as much. It is more of a writing assignment. So we've gone past that setting, that image that the character, the author has created for us. We've been introduced to some characters, and now we're going through plot uh, development, the rising actions. I mean, some of you are finished, so you've already gone through the way gone through this, but uh, many of you are just at the rising actions, where there's going to be a sequence of events that take place before the climax of the story, kind of setting up the climax story. Um, how I see it is like various challenges usually that are overcome. So, you know, in a detective novel, sometimes you'll find various clues that lead to other clues. Uh, that maybe lead to a kidnapping or something else. And then at the end, there's a climax where he finds the bad guy or finds out what was going on. And then at, after that, it kind of, there's a little, uh, as Madame Peel put, denouement at the end. I know it from French because I took French emotion. Um, a little bit of kind of unfolding of the story after it's done. So if you remember yesterday when I gave you that sheet, I said I wasn't exactly uh, ecstatic about how they did the diagram of that sheet. It's not quite as I see a story going out. Uh, the rising action comes like this. And then the denouement at the end is just a little bit. It's not a, a mountain all the way to the bottom. It's just more uh, a third of the mountain, we'll say, or, or, or much less. So this week in those rising actions, in those three rising actions I wanted you to find in your book, uh, there should be three events at least. Uh, there could be more um, that, have, uh, that lead to the climax, that aren't yet at the climax. Uh, I know some of you have already asked, well, I only can find two. Uh, that, that's all right. If you only can find two and that's where you're at, then, then no problem. Then keep it there. But otherwise, I'd say read more and you'll probably find another one. Um, or you can go right to the climax yourself if you're already there and you found two rising actions and then the climax. You could put that in for your third, third paragraph to write about it. Uh, and that's what I want to see as an end product is three paragraphs written about uh, the rising actions in your story. And you can hand those in uh, through... Google Docs, or taking pictures, just writing it freehand as you guys have been doing it before. Either way is fine, uh, as I put on the assignment outline. Um, rising actions, th there's no need to complicate it more. Yeah, that's it. That's all I have for, for today. So let's see where I'm at now in my paper bag method. So I have... In that first week, taking that character and taking a character wheel and made Lyra. And as you can fit, see, I filled in the entire character wheel for Lyra. Um, I also had the character traits and settings, but I actually put that in as one of the objects in my paper bag rather than attaching it to the outside. Uh, next, we go on to the setting. And uh, I drew this setting. It's a little later on in the book. So this is one of the rising actions that I have in my book where Lyra goes to see this cottage in the middle of nowhere with this great bear um, and that scene was painted vividly in my image by the author well done and he did it through feeling tones and descriptions and setting up the scene so we talked about that last week and then this week what I've added now is 
Uh, the rising actions in plot development on the side. So I have three rising actions on the side that I put. Um, the three that I put are Lyra goes north with the gypsies after escaping from Miss Coulter. So that's the first one. The second one, Lyra meets the great bear uh, and aeronaut Lee Scoresby and gets captured by the Panzer Bjorn. So that was a, another major event in the story leading up to it where where it's not the climax of the story, but we're building up to it on their adventure up to north, on their adventure up to uh, the Bullvanger where the, the main climax tells take place. This is one of the main events that takes place up there, the second main event that I have. And the third main event that I have that takes up before the climax has happened, my three main events are Lyra gets captured in Bullvanger where, where they perform the incision. So Lyra gets captured in the actual place where the incisions happen, which if you, were if you know the Golden Compass, uh, you'll know that's about... Um, if not, you'll have to read it to figure it out. Uh, and in the incisions at the climax uh, is what I will be talking about next week. But I don't get quite there. This is just the rising actions, the three things that really kind of keep you going. They're page turners while they're in these events. And each one is almost like it's almost mini plot in itself. You get the rising action of, you know, in the first one, and Lyra goes north after escaping from Miss Coulter. So first, Lyra uh, goes with Miss Coulter voluntarily, and everything's fine. But then she realizes Miss Coulter is kind of like evil and like trying to control her, so she has to escape. And then she almost gets captured by the gobblers. But then the, she escapes because um, it is Miss Costa who escapes, uh, who who frees her and kills the, the the gobblers and takes her with her on a boat up north. And so this is the start of Lyra's adventure. It's the first rising action in it. And in itself is almost a story that's complete right there. But it goes on and it builds off that to then goes into the next part where she meets a giant bear in this town and befriends him. And the rising action in there, she learns that he's been captured there by the town um, as kind of a drunken bear that is only performing his menial services when he's actually a great bear, a great warrior bear. And she provides him the means to free him. And from that, he becomes her loyal partner. So again, it's these rising actions, but that, that itself was like a whole plot in itself and uh, had its own climax, if you will, when she frees uh, Yurk by Ernison. So here we have now, after this one, the, next, the last one I have, we have uh, Lyra getting captured by the Bullbanger where they perform the incisions. Here we're at like the peak. Everything's been built up to this point where they're going to free capture or free Lyra and destroy this place where they do these horrible things to the children. And uh, that is the climax of the story. Uh, but these are the events that have led to it. So that that's how it is going in the in the Golden Compass. And this is how my paper bag method is going. And also because I'm. Uh, each week I like to find something that is an object to put into my paper bag so that when I talk about it at the end, I, I've kind of got it lined up. I know what's going on. Uh, this week of all objects, I've chosen a modem. And to me, this represents, this is a symbol of Lyra herself, but more the alithiometer. Uh, the lithiometer is this weird, strange device that you ask it questions and somehow it spins around and dials and gives you these symbols. And somehow through Lyra, she's the modem or this ability to read uh, these strange symbols and then make sense out of them and then perform actions to do it. It's kind of like me when I'm at the computer. And uh, right without the modem connecting me to the internet, which I didn't have a month ago, um, I wasn't able to ask my computer questions to get the answers I wanted. I could ask it anything, but it wasn't connected up to that internet system to then get any answers from it. So Lyra is kind of like that modem. She's that intermediary who's able to read that alithiometer and then make use of the symbols that it gives um, when she asks it questions, just like my modem does. I now can ask my computer questions and all of a sudden the blinks on the modem go deet, 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 and an answer comes back onto my screen um, giving me the answer because it goes to this medium, this modem, this Lyra that is able to then give me answers that then make sense and decode things that I can't able to decode. So that was a symbol I chose this week uh, for putting my paper bag and my symbol. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a symbol of Lyra or the alithiometer itself. It's the relationship between them, I guess. And that's what the modem is. It's a relationship between me and my computer that's that that's that represents it gives me answers to questions that uh, i pose it all right and that's all i have to say uh that's it for this week and i will see you guys next week uh actually i'll see you tomorrow in class
All right, if you have any questions, yeah, feel free to save them for class. Otherwise, just email them to me and I'll get right back to you.